there's some projective punishment going on right now with subscribership on YouTube as I see it in that there are all these pushes to punish people for the smallest possible infractions in the way that they build up their subscriber base while the biggest thieves of subscribers are going completely unpunished. In my case I lost 13 or so subscribers in the great purge of uh, December 13th last year when they took out everybody who was supposed to be doing sub for sub wanting to trade one subscribers for subscribers. I never did such a thing. But I lost 13 and a couple days later there was a surge in my subscriber count of about the same amount. So apparently all the people who got pulled off my subscriber list resubscribed and thank you very much for that. And to those of you who don't know what's going on, make sure you hit the subscriber and the notification bell and and the parentheses and all the other things you have to hit and then hit save and so on so that you'll know because there's a shadow unsubscribing going on with people who try to well I don't know if it's people in general or people who are just saying certain things but if you look at my last video that one got demonetized and got very little views which is a shame I think because it was a very important thing to say on the basis of what's what's wrong with Western society but I can try and come at it from the opposite side and see if I don't get demonetized this time which is that there were people in the Bible who apparently got pregnant not by the standard means. They did it by eating fruit. This is Eve. And this is a reworking of the Sumerian story of Enki, who ate from a bunch of fruit that he wasn't supposed to and, and had multiple uh, pregnancies resulting, which he had to have removed like a equivalent of a cesarean at the time by a goddess. So what's different with these people including possibly the Nephilim, is that when you don't get married to the gods and do what's required to produce, reproduce with them, you live much longer. Apparently, uh, this is, there's a lot of these people's ages aren't given, so we don't know if they ever died at all. But there are two lines of descent. There's the Genesis 1 creation, the Genesis 2 creation. And when in Eve's case, she has Cain, and Cain probably took a long time to go out and get married because he founded a city when he had his son, and there had to be enough people built up in the population, which didn't come from, from his parents, in order to have someone to marry and found a city. So there could have been quite a long delay before he, he got out and got married and had his first child. After that, there are a total of five generations or so. There's Enoch and Erad and two guys' names who start with M and Lamech, who is the name of the father of Noah on the other line of descent where people's dates or their ages when they have their children and when they die are recorded. So five generations go by and then that little piece of, of narrative comes to an end. And it starts over talking about Seth who was born of Eve. There's a Seth on the other side as well. But on this one, it doesn't take long before the intersections of the other narratives come about. Seth has one son, and then it says, and then man began to call upon the name of the Lord, which brings us into the next phase of, this, of the story. Call upon, as far as I can see, means that they weren't being favorable. It'd be like taking the Lord's name in vain, or committing adultery, or idol worship in that they're being unfaithful to the Lord. The way that they were unfaithful, I think, comes from Genesis 6 with the sons of God and the daughters of men, because those people who would marry sons of God other than Yehovah, the Lord, would be, from his point of view, being unfaithful to him. So they would be unfaithful by marrying these other second generation gods, sons of God. When that happens, it would seem from the text that there's a double meaning to the 120 years stated by Yehovah, and that there's going to be 120 years before the flood hits and people will die that way, or eventually their lifespans are going to be cut down to 120 years from the at least 900 plus that's mentioned. So at the time when there's 120 years left before the flood, that could be possibly coordinated or correlated with the spot in the other timeline where they say that men began to call upon the name of the Lord. So that's when the trouble starts from Yehovah's point of view. 
So if that happens, when there are 120 years left to the flood, and then we allow a bit of time for Seth to meet, find a wife and give birth to his son, and you pull that back another 180 years maximum or so, if we take the a parallelism with the other timeline, how long the oldest guy lived before he had his son, then that's about 300 years back from the flood. If we count that backward, then Eve would have been at least 1,200 years old at the time she had Seth, which would make her considerably older than Methuselah on the other timeline. And we still aren't told when she dies. Why does she live so much longer? Well, because she didn't do what the sons of God and daughters of men did. She found uh, she did it by another another means. So the means of it, it's almost like uh, there was a leak of immortality. Yehovah might have been deliberately leaking a form of immortality, although he said You're, you'll die on that day. So maybe it's not really life as we know it. It could be unlife. And I might have to devote another video to that. I mean, that they might not have been truly alive, in a sense, because there are all these vampire stories surrounding Lilith, who's supposed to be the first vampire in a way, and some people blame Cain, but they're all circling around the main issue, which is if you eat from the tree of, of knowledge of good and evil, is it like a twilight conversion, as alluded to in the movie, in that there's this combination of dark and light, good and evil. That, that's what the contract is that makes a vampire. So Adam and Eve then would have had to have their, their at Eve would have had to have her, her potential offspring just implanted in her rather than being able to conceive because she wouldn't be able to conceive in a normal way. Well, maybe I should have not have diverted that much, but in any case, there are two strains potentially of people then who are not involved in the sons of God, daughters of men incident. And those would be Adam and Eve from the, from the second chapter creation, and the men who are left over when the sons of God married the daughters of men. It begs the question, okay, we know what the sons, what the daughters of men did, who they married, but who did the sons of men marry? There would have been wives left unavailable because the second generation gods come in and marry the mortal women. What happens to the mortal men who would have married those women? Especially since from the Genesis 2 side, you actually have a surplus of men because the Adam and Eve who made uh, Cain, Abel, and Seth produced only males. Well, that could be who the Nephilim refer to because there are unmarried men left. And they would be old. And they, and they stay old because they don't engage in the activity for which people are punished with shortening of their lives. And this could carry on for quite a while, even after the flood, because the people who come on the Genesis 2 creation boat, who are in the one Noah's household, we aren't told how many there are. There might be more than there are than the eight, more than there are on the eight in the other boat. Now, if those people still aren't aging and they want to go out and multiply after the flood, unlike today where the longer people live, the fewer children they generally have, but if these people wanted for some reason and to go out and, and repopulate, even though they weren't explicitly told to do so, because that's the way people tend to be, sometimes they're kind of contrary, then that would explain why they gave birth to 72 nations and all sorts of lists of nations and languages and so on that they produced, while the people from the other boat seemed to have produced only one nation, which became Israel. Though the people on one side are reproducing and making numbers far faster, apparently, than, than the people on the other side. And this might be explained in part by the fact that they still aren't dying of old age yet. So if they, if they were Yehovah's people, maybe Yehovah is saying, your life's going to be 120 years, but it hasn't kicked in yet. Those people have not been punished by the shortening of their lifespan yet. It doesn't happen until farther down. In the Holy Wars, where as I see it, Yehovah says, Israel's my people. They're going to be my portion when the world is devoided up, which is a total switch from what it was before because the people who are Yehovah's people, or at least half of them, from the Adam and Eve line in chapter 2 of Genesis are Yehovah's people. 
so they they are the ones he has as, as his portion and then after the flood it seems like the places are the roles are switched because the people who are made by the council of the Elohim the, the ones who have the numbers assigned to their ages and when they have their children go on after the flood but they are claimed by Jehovah as his people so there's a switch the Elohim's people go over here and Jehovah's people go over there and what happens eventually in Exodus is that Jehovah says go and wipe out all those people in Canaan who would have been originally his own people and that by it might be why there are so many giants among them because if people are very very old and they they still continue to grow at a very slow rate then they will gradually get bigger over the years so by that accounting there wouldn't necessarily have been any giants before the flood because they hadn't lived long enough to get that much bigger than everyone else but Jehovah essentially double crosses and once his people have served his purpose of reproducing in sufficient numbers to give him a big supply of potential worshipers which then get reallocated to the other gods he doesn't want them anymore and he sends his people out who are now short-lived by Moses' time Moses lives only 120 years which is alluded to before the flood and says go wipe those people out to the last man and their animals and their children and everything then he would have done this possibly because those people still had no limit on their their lifespan and since they're not his anymore he doesn't want them living and multiplying and providing more support in the form of worship to some other god